Welcome to another episode of Storytelling in the Tropics. My name is Alison Harrison. Our next guest today is someone that is a staple in the parish of St. Thomas and someone who has made her mark in education and community development. Today we're speaking to none other than, I call her Justice, first and last name, Veronica Facey. Auntie Veronica, welcome. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> For having me. <laughs> All right, let's just jump off. Talk to me about where you grew up and your beginnings, the community you're from. Oh, so you want to hear my story? I do. Oh, my story. Oh, it's a long story. We might have to have part two. No problem. Anyway, I was born in the community of Kasho Bush, a.k.a. Kosho Bush. Kosho Bush. Bush. All right. Right. In those days, people don't say Kasho. It was after a long while that people realized when you saw the name of the place written that it's Kasho Bush, but people used to say Kosho Bush. Kosho Bush. Right. That's where I was born, and it's also in the community of Port Morant, that's St. Thomas, Jamaica, and it is in the West Indies. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. I was born to parents, Eugenia Douglas, a.k.a. Miss Wingy, and Vincent Facey, a.k.a. Mas Vin, or Tipper. All right, and I... Did you have siblings? Yes. How many? In all, I have 11 siblings. When yourself making 12, 12 of you, okay. Okay. And where do you fall in the line? Third. I am the third of the 11. Okay. I have a big sister, Elaine. She's in England. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, they call her Vani. She's really Viola Facey. Mm -hmm. She died after a year and six months. Oh, she died, yeah. And then I came in the picture at number three. Number three. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, so tell me about your parents. What do you remember growing up in Kushobosh? I remember growing up in Kushobosh. The lady who was the, 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 the landlady at the time, we call her aunt. She was Remela Nesbeth. We call her aunt. Is in that yard, me barn. And we have neighbors that they call like Nylon. And we have the whites on the other side. And Blossom White, in particular, wanted to take care of me because she was in love with a man next door. Hmm. So if she gets to take care of me, then she would get to her lover. I so see. she opted to take care of me. Okay. And I would go to Sunday school at the entrance of Cashew Bush over the Pilgrim Holiness Church, which is now merged and renamed Wesleyan Holiness Church. Oh, so you were raised in the Holiness Church? Yes, because the pastor at that time, Reverend Azadiah Malkaija Reynolds, was my godfather. Repeat that name for me, please. Azadiah Malkaija Reynolds. Okay. As a reverend gentleman. Strong man. And he was my godfather. He mm -hmm. was in charge of the church then. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about your early years in school? What was school life like? My early years in school, and very funny enough, you know, I didn't go to school early, in my early years, in Port Morant. Okay. I was with my grand aunt in Springfield, Barking Lodge. 
and I went to Aunt Clary private school. It wasn't basic school then. Right. In those days, you had school, little school, private school, as it was called in those days, that was attached to the church. So you have spiritual people mm -hmm. who used to run those schools. And I really enjoyed myself mm -hmm. at Aunt Clara Basic School. How old were you when you started Aunt Clara's Basic School? I was two. You were two. Just two years old because I was living next door to Aunt Clary. So you remember being two years old at school? Yes, I remember being two at private school, Aunt Clary School. I remember it well. And we had some little brown and black books mm -hmm. with an ABC on it, written just normally. And at the back, you have the ABC written in what we call cursive now, or join up. Mm -hmm. And I had my, and we had slate. Mm -hmm. We use slate, mm -hmm. the one that um, can break. Mm -hmm. You have A, B, C class. Mm -hmm. And then no, the smaller ones were given the cardboard slate. I see. But when you reach B class, mm -hmm. and they think that you could manage the, the slate with the frame, mm -hmm. then you get that. And you have slate pencil that you would use to write on the slate. And I remember that little book, I call it my reading book, where they had the ABC, and they, you used to learn little words, even if they were not real words, but you were taught to use those books to get letter sounds and words. Mm -hmm. Like you would have a picture with a man mm -hmm. and the man would be in the van. Mm -hmm. And the reading would say, Mr. Dan is the man in the van. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. But before getting up to that, you had the van by itself, and then you have three words. You would have van, man, dan. Mm -hmm. And they would ask you to touch the word that correspond with the picture. Mm -hmm. And we would do that. I saw that as fun. Mm -hmm. And we would have rhymes. Mm -hmm. When I left Springfield and went to Stokes Hall, because mm -hmm. my grand aunt removed from um, Springfield and went to Stokes Hall. And I used to go to a basic school. The lady's name was Facey. Mm -hmm. I found out after a while that she was my cousin. Hmm. And because of that, I thought that I got a raw deal because I could not be myself and be free mm -hmm. like other children mm -hmm. because I, 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 I bear the, the, the teacher's name and related and all of that. Right. And it was run by a place that they call Jarrett Lane. Mm -hmm. I think the sign is still there now, Jarrett Lane mm -hmm. in Stokes Hall. And we used to go to school. And one day, there was a fight at school. I was not involved in the fight, but I was there. Mm -hmm. And when I didn't say anything, I didn't do anything. I just sat there and I watched what was going on. And when the teacher came and they were asking, I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And she said, what did I do? Mm 
-hmm. if I couldn't part the fight. Right. And I said, no. Mm -hmm. And she said, why? I said, I am not involved. Right. Me no in a the fight. Me na fight, <laughs> so me leave fight alone. Mm -hmm. Me just sit down and watch fight. Mm -hmm. And she decided that she was going to flag me hmm. because I sat there and I watched the fight and I said nothing. Mm -hmm. And I just decided that I wasn't going to take the flag in. So me just put me slate in my school bag and threw me back by my shoulder. And I stood there. And as she moved at me, me just jump over the flowers them at the veranda and me gone home. <laughs> How old were you at this time? I was about like three. Three years old? Yes, three then. And I went home. And when I went home, I didn't say anything to anybody. But Auntie Maud saw me and she said, So wait, oh, you come home so soon. Mm -hmm. I'm in the ear when you come. And I wasn't answering. And she asked me about three times. And on the third time, I said to her, Teacher won't beat me. And she said, So what you do? Me say me not do nothing. And that's why teacher won't beat me because me not do nothing. Mm. <laughs> and she said, no man, that can't be right. That can't be right. And she said, come. And she hold my hand and right round back to Jarrett Lane <laughs> to teacher. <laughs> and she asked teacher, what me do? And teacher said, she not do nothing more than she sit down and watch the fight. Mm -hmm. I never said or do anything. Mm -hmm. And my um, grandma said, so that's why you want to beat him? And she said, yes, she must learn to be responsible. And Auntie Maud said, responsible for what? Me tell her, so you no bother lick back a pick me. No bother beat back a nigga pick me, because you will go to prison. <laughs> and she just hold me hand. And we gone and we gone home. And then when we went home, she said to me, You wanna go back to school tomorrow? Me said, Of course, me go back to school. And she said, All right, go on to school. And she took me to school the morning herself. And then she said, um, teacher, take care of her. Remember, me say, no beat Rakanega pick me, cause you will go to prison. And she said, All right. They gone and she went to her. Are there any songs that you were taught in school at that early age that you remember? Shine up your shoes, girl, brush your hair. Give clothes and body plenty care. Most of all, remember me, dear. How oh, dear and thank you, no broke no square. How oh, dear, how you do? Thank you, thank you. Beg your pardon, excuse me. Practice up for courtesy. Treat everybody good and fair. Give us in grass, give puss in pear. Most of all, remember me, dear. How oh, dear and thank you, no broke no square. How oh, dear, how oh, you do. Thank you, thank you. Beg your pardon, excuse me. Practice up for courtesy. Get education, turn big shot. Though you climb up high, beware of that. But don't lose your manners. Don't forget how oh, dee and thank you, no broke no square. How oh, dee, how you do. Thank you, thank you. Beg your pardon, excuse me. Practice up for courtesy. Mm -hmm. And that was a song that I won't forget because it had to deal with manners, having manners. You can't pass people and don't say good morning, good afternoon, or whatever time of the day it was. And you can't say big people are come and you don't say, even if 
They don't call to you as a child. You have to call to them. Mm -hmm. And if they call to you and you don't answer, perhaps you don't even hear, and they call to you and you don't answer, you know that your parents are going to hear about it. And then now, you're going to get beaten, as they would say. But as for me, personally, I detest that. Hmm. You can't want to beat me for something where, you know, no. So from an early age, I knew what I was all about. And I decided that nobody's going to walk on me. I know my rights hmm. from very early. It's very amazing that you remember uh, being two and three years old. Yes, yes. I remember very well, especially in the school setting. In the school setting. I, yes, I remember from that early age. That sounds very Miss Lou. Like, were you, was, was Miss Lou very active during those times in your life? Were you, did you have access? Like, were you hearing about her? No, you know, not at that early age. But because of the environment that I was brought up in, the people around me, they were so energetic and diverse because in those days, whether your parents were members of churches or not, children had to go to church. And it's like every environment that I lived in, I have different denominations because where I went in Stokes Hall at Jarrett Lane, there was a, it is still there today, an evangelistic church. Mm -hmm. And those people, they have vibes. Mm -hmm. Further up the road was the Baptist. Mm -hmm. I went to Baptist church. And then I went to school, primary school, at Winchester. Mm -hmm. I had options. I could go to Golden Grove mm -hmm. or go to Winchester. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to go to Golden Grove because my neighbor's children were going to Golden Grove mm -hmm. and I didn't want to see them all the time. Seeing them at home and seeing, seeing them, them at, at school, school and right. everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I opted to go to Winchester school. That was an Anglican church. Golden Grove is an Anglican church church school mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. But I went to Winchester and in Winchester community you have revival church. Mm -hmm. You have church of God as well. And you still have those who went to the Anglican church in Golden Grove because the principal was a member of the Anglican church mm -hmm. in Golden Grove. Mm -hmm. And then you have others who went to Baptist in Stokes Hall. Mm -hmm. So you had a variety and I was in the mix. Now, as a child, when church having programs, whether it is Easter or just a weekend thing like Friday evening or so. I always like to dress up in my pretty dandan, my crinoline and my skirt just cock off. So. <laughs> and we go up to one place then call Transport and they had concert mm -hmm. and I always like to perform. Oh, so you have a performance background. Yes, man. Yes, man. My mother, my mother is a very vibrant lady. Mm -hmm. She don't have body like me. Mm -hmm. She not fat so. Mm -hmm. I guess that is why from early out them call her whingy mm -hmm. and some people call her tiny. Mm -hmm. And she's just wassy, vibesy. Mm -hmm. So I guess that is where this comes from. Mm -hmm. And with the AME Church. Mm -hmm. What does AME mean? AME, it's African Methodist Episcopal. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So their style of worship, you have a little African, mm -hmm. not like a whole heap of African. Right. That's a percussion, drums. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have Methodists and you have the Episcopal Church would be more like the Catholic sort of setting in between Anglican and Catholic. Right. That was the Episcopal type of thing. And that church was an hour, my mother people them land. So we had to go to church and we recited and all of that and you know, and then when if your parents were there, like oh my grand aunt would be there now, and when I recite and them charge and say put her up back again, and then they say, Madi here, I'm cool, Madi here, and all of those things, and I just vibes, I just like the liveliness and that thing from oh, I was that. a child. Now when I went to Winchester School. I went there before I was six. And the principal said she wouldn't take me because they, they were not going to take until. And I cried, I cried, I cried. And I said, I'm not going back home. I'm not going back home because the school me come. Mm -hmm. I mean, I come so till school over. And she called me in the in our office and she was talking to me and she said who are your parents and I remember I, I, I don't know why mm -hmm. I said this first but I said that first I gave my father's name first I said my father is Vincent Facey and he's from St. Elizabeth Braze River and the principal said Hold on, what did you say? And I repeated. And she said to me, Vincent Facey, Braze River in St. Elizabeth. And I said, yes. And there and then, I found out that the principal was my father's cousin, I first see. cousin. I see, I see. And she said, she going to catch me in junior one. Mm -hmm. And I spent the rest of that day there based on my performance for the day in the class. Mrs. Marshall told the principal that she could take me even if I was not on the register, so to speak, because in those days you have to be at a particular age to go on the register so that when the ministry officials come, they would know. And they kept me. The next day, I was in the class. At the, when I came, the following morning, that's day three, she said I should take up my things and go over to Juna too. And I spent that day in Juna too. And based on my performance, the following day, she said, I must find myself at junior three. Mm -hmm. And I settled at junior three until I went over to junior four. It was at junior four that I left and came to Port Moran to live at Monkey Lane because my grand aunt had died, and even though I was staying with the Millers who lived in the same yard, things were not to my suit, and I told my father that I wanted to come home, and so he took me home for the, the summer, and then the September, no, not the September, after school, school opening after the summer holidays, mm -hmm. I went to Port Morant All Age School. And then 
I was in Mrs. Toller's, Ms. Toller's class. And we got a composition to write. Oh, I spent my summer holidays and I wrote. It was satisfactory. And so Ms. Toller kept it back. But I was wondering what, happened, what was happening, why she kept back my book, and she gave the others the book. And the others were so happy that I didn't get back my book because they thought that I had done so badly that Miss, Mr. Locke could not give me back my book. Right. And uh, when she read it out and said that I did well and so on, the other children were vexed, and so they organized to fight me the evening. So we went to post office, and after we went to post office, um, Louise Beckford, a.k.a. Pepper, said that they stretch out her hand with something in there and said the artist man backs out and touch. And of course, because Winsome was the artist man, she just backs out the thing and touch me. And me just, me just back off my bag and beat her bad with my bag when my auntie sent for England. <laughs> me, let, me, me let her bag. And then I just grabbed her up in her clothes because I was so vexed because I didn't interfere with them. And them come to fight me and just throw her down the road from that road at Chapel Hill down to the road at the, where the old market was. And uh, we went to school and I, I, I did not speak to them, and they always want to fight me, but George Deans, that's Barbara's brother, because mm. we were neighbors living at Monkey Lane, and he came and told them, so they must not interfere with me, or else they go and tell teacher, I'm go and tell teacher, and so... It was, well, I was there until I decided to go out and take less. When I went there, though, I was skipping class like that because when I was supposed to do common entrance for 11 plus, mm -hmm. I did 11 plus, but I was in grade nine. Mm -hmm. The same skipping of class went on. So I did two exams. I did the grade nine exam that was supposed to be done because you're in grade nine. Mm -hmm. And common entrance was supposed to be done because you are of that age. Mm -hmm. And so I saw the other children taking lessons with teacher Freya, AKA Bowley. Mm -hmm. And so I, nobody called me to class. So I see them taking lessons to take exam and I know I'm going to take exam. So I went to lesson class. And he never ran me out of the class. He was there. When I realized that he really appreciated me in the class was one evening I didn't stop at lessons because mama was working late. She would work at Clifton Hill. And that time you have the ships used to come to Bowden, sugar ship and banana boat. I don't know why they say banana boat and sugar ship. Mm -hmm. But they had to work late so as to get the banana over to Bowden. So I had to go home early. I couldn't stop at lessons because I had to go home to take care of my siblings mm -hmm. and to carry mama dinner to yeah. Clifton Hill. Mm -hmm. So when I went back to school the following day, I told the principal good morning that's Mr. Frey, and he never answered. And I thought that he did not hear, and I repeated, and he still never, and just looked at me and this kissing teeth. And says, and not say anything. And he went on his merry way. So I went and I sat down. Miss Ferguson, Miss Evelyn Ferguson, was the teacher then. So when I went to the, the class, he, the principal, sent and called Miss Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And Miss Ferguson went and he complained to Miss Ferguson that I wasn't at lessons and all of that. And Miss Ferguson came and said to me, Veronica, and I said, Yes, Miss, why you never go to lessons yesterday evening? And I explained the whole story to her. 
And he said, but did you tell Miss Afre? I said, no, Miss. And he said, she said, why? I said, because Miss Afre never called me to listen. And I never think it important for me to tell him that I wasn't going to be at lessons. Because he never called me to lessons. I went to the lessons myself. Right. But it so happened that he, he had an experience where the children weren't grasping the lesson that he was teaching at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because I wasn't there or what. And so he gave them a flogging and he took up his things and walked out and said, they must go on home and them yard. So he gave them homework. So after Miss Ferguson said that to me and said, he likes you, so don't get on his wrong side. And he like when you're in the lessons. And I said, all right, miss. And so I went to the, 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 the children who... When one particular girl, Carleen Williams, that was Typhoon's granddaughter, I think, and asked her to, to give me the, 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 the thing. And it was maths. We call it sums in those days. And I did the sums, and I didn't go how to play as usual before I go to lesson. I went straight to lesson class, and I sat down. And when Mr. Frey came, he pretended not to see me, and he went out where we used to play, and said, Facey and company, I am about to start my lesson class. And he, he went, and so when he came, he saw me sitting and said, say, oh, you are here. And then they were going over, he said to me, collect the books, and make sure that your book is there. The homework. Because he really wanted to be beaten because he was upset because I wasn't at lessons the evening before. So I went, I collected the books and put my one on the bottom. I collected the books and he said to me that we are going to work the problems on the board. It was long division. That a my cup of tea. And he said... And Miss Facey, you are going to work the first sums on the board. So I went on the board and I was doing the sums and finished. And he said to me, I want to hear what you are saying, how you arrive at your answer. And I took the duster and I cleaned off everything. From that day, I knew I was going to be a teacher. Because I cleaned off the board and I started now talking to the class. It's as if he wasn't in the class. I started talking to the class and each step I went, I allowed them to know why we're doing this. I asked them, why are we doing this? And so they tell me and I say, so I must write down so and so no. And they say, yes. Huh? No, I was at grade nine. I wasn't okay. supposed to be at grade nine okay. Okay. In, the, in the school, but because my age wasn't grade nine age, but because of the movements. Right. We finished with the class, them just like that, so I had to move okay. on. Okay. Okay. All right. And exam time come. And Mr. Frey, the evening before, Mr. Frey said, um, I know you know, go on home on the yard and sleep and come an exam the next day. And he said, I see the writing on the wall. I know exactly what I'm going to put on government paper tomorrow and so on. Well, exam came and I did my exam. And the result came now. And when I reached school in the morning, Mr. Frey said, Yes, Veronica. Yes, Veronica, I know you could do it. And I said, what, sir? I know you would have passed. And I said, true, sir. <laughs> and he said, yes. And I said, but, sir, the evening before the exam, you say you know exactly the foolishness where we're going to put on government paper. So this now is sound contrary to me. Anyway, I said, thank you, sir. And I went to my class, and everybody, they were congratulating and so on. My thing was to go to Happy Grove, Happy Grove High School in Portland. And so 
I went off to Happy Grove High School. It was that year, it was six of us that got through the exam. Mm -hmm. Three went to Happy Grove and three went to Morant Bay. But then I caught up with some others who had left to go to Stokes Hall Secondary. Because mm -hmm. when so Stokes Hall Secondary was built, they took some persons from, they took the grade niners, some grade niners from Port Morant mm -hmm. and sent them to Stokes Hall Secondary. Mm -hmm. And then some of us met up back at Happy Grove and maybe more and be. Mm -hmm. Well, my time at Happy Grove was a very challenging one. Really? Yes, because you were now placed with children who were actually going to school at Happy Grove before. So you started at grade 10 at Happy Grove? No, grade 9. Oh, you did over grade nine? No, I wouldn't say over, because it was a different kettle of fish. Oh, okay. That was how those from Stokes Hall Secondary transitioned to, to Abbey Grove, you know, and we were in the, in the same class. Oh, so once you've, you've, you've gone to, through to ninth grade at the, the, the secondary school, and then you go into the high, you transition the, into the high school. There was an exam, right. that same exam. So they took the exam and they, they were placed at the high school level. In ninth grade? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Why it was challenging for me, I am coming from the all-age school mm -hmm. where you did not have different teachers teaching, it was subject teaching. Right. We were accustomed to our one teacher for one class and that one teacher did everything. Mm -hmm. No, I was at high school where you have different teachers coming in for different things. One for science, one for agri, one for English, one for literature, and things like that. So it was a bit challenging for me. And then we had foreigners, mm -hmm. foreign teachers, mm -hmm. that they spoke away back here. Mm -hmm. And so some of the, I could hardly hear. Mm -hmm. some, of, some of the things. So I, I had to try and get myself used to the, 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 the thing quickly. Mm -hmm. I had to adjust myself quickly to high school situation mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. get in the different clubs and all of that. And then it was smooth sailing. That was when I get serious because at one point in time, as I said, I wasn't that person who speak. Mm -hmm. I just sit and listen. If I don't understand something, that is when I would speak. Mm -hmm. And so somebody made a mischief in the class. It was by a class with a man from, I think it was somewhere in Trinidad, Fitzpatrick was his name. And he was teaching, and they were misbehaving. And when he turned around, everybody was laughing and all of that. And just to me, no, me not do anything. Me serious and I wait for them to get back to the task at hand so that I could go on with the lesson. And he picked on me and said that I was the one who made the mischief. Hmm. And I should leave the class. And I said, no, I am not leaving. I am not leaving the class. And I remember Donovan Thomas said, hmm, is serious. She's a woman, I stand up here, right? Mm -hmm. And he said to me that the principal he went outside, and then he came back in, and he said to me that the principal called me. I said, sir, I will go to the principal 
to find out why he wants to see me, but I will do so when this class is ended. And he, he said, no, I said no, because when I go to the principal, I am going to miss the class and my school fee is paid and I'm serious about that. Mm -hmm. I am at school to learn, not to give trouble or misbehave or giggling or anything. And I sat there and he decided that he wasn't going to, to teach the class if I didn't go outside. And I sat there, I didn't go outside. And the other children said, no, sir. No, sir. She didn't do anything. And then now, you are going to punish all of us by not going on with the lessons. Mm -hmm. I would prefer you go on with the lessons. And he went on with the lessons. And the lessons was, the lesson was finished. I went straight through the door and I went to see the principal. I spoke to the secretary first mm -hmm. and then she called and said a student is out there and I said my name to see him. And for the life of me, the principal didn't know anything about what was happening. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know why I was there to see him. Right. And I told him, I said, but Mr. Fitzpatrick came to you I suppose, and came back and said that you would like to see me. And so he sent and called Mr. Fitzpatrick. And Mr. Fitzpatrick and I couldn't get along. In that, I saw him as a liar. Mm -hmm. One thing, you don't lie to children. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I just go to his class. I made sure I do his work and get what I'm to get. And it was that, and I was so happy when I had to, when it was time to move on. Mm -hmm. And my years at Apple Grove, I, I really enjoyed school. When it was time to play, I played. I was in drama club, music. That was when I learned that the national anthem doesn't say eternal. It's not a long note because James Verity, we call him Uncle Jim, he was the music teacher, one of the music teachers at that time, and he taught us the national anthem, and it is eternal, short note, eternal instead of eternal. Mm. And to this day, I have that with me. Mm -hmm. And when we are singing the national anthem, and I hear people say, eternal father, bless our land, it, it does something to me because I was taught by Uncle Jim, it's not no drawn out E, it was assured, eternal. I see. I remember that well. And then the other teacher we had was Miss Baker. Miss Baker. She was more on the rhythmic side, and I liked that side. I was happy when it was time to go to mu music class with Miss Baker. And she taught us the song, La Paloma, The Dove. Mm -hmm. So you see, I was doing music and I was learning Spanish and everything mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, when it was time now, reach fifth form, examine everything, and it was time for us to... Go to college? Yes, but before that, we had... Um, Michael Manley had brought in... He, he was the person at the helm at that, at that time. Uh -huh. And he brought in free education, so to speak. And he brought in the National Youth Service Program. Uh -huh. When it started, it was one year. And you volunteered uh -huh. to do, do the one year. Uh -huh. When my time came to leave school... It was compulsory, and it was two years. So we were, the graduates, 
we were, our teachers never allowed us to choose anything. They just fill out the, 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 the form, we signed our, 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 our names, and off it went. When mine came back, I was placed in the field of education. Mm -hmm. And the, those in education went off to Michael mm -hmm. for training. And those in health went to Kingston School of Nursing. Mm -hmm. We had some who even went to, in the army. Mm -hmm. And it was like that. When they came back from the training, those in nursing, they were spread all across the health field. Some were at the health centers and some were at the hospitals directly. I was placed at Pear Tree River Primary School. Hmm. It was a primary then. It was all age. Mm -hmm. And so hold on. So your two year youth service is when you are placed at whatever field that you're interested in. Uh -huh. Health, teaching. Mm -hmm. So it is after those two years that they placed you or is it during the two years that they placed you at the school? No, man, I was, seeing that I was with the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. for the two years, my two years experience was actually in the school. Okay. In the classroom. Okay. However, when I went, a new person just, got, I didn't even remember that there was a school at Patriot River. But I was placed there. I went with an open mind. And the principal at the time, Mrs. Rachel Blake, Mrs. Blake never saw us as youth service workers, you know. Mm -hmm. We got classes. And so every two weeks, we would have workshop. And then for the other two weeks, we would meet as service workers mm -hmm. to share our experience in whichever field right, you right. were. And uh, that was how I got to Pear Tree River. And uh, we were expected as youth service workers to do everything else as the other teachers at the school. Mm -hmm. We were not like say assistant to anybody. Mm -hmm. We got our own classes and the principal would expect lesson plans from us just like everybody else. But what she would do, she would have a session and it was not even called lesson plan. It was called scheme. And so you had to write a yearly plan. That was the scheme. And from the yearly plan, mm -hmm. you would take out um, topics and you would go week by week. Mm -hmm. And like for the sciences, social studies, and, and, and bio, we would have read a program. Mm -hmm. So we, there was a television television in the the what we call common room where we would go and watch the, the lessons being taught on the TV like what is happening now, now during with COVID. the on yes right. mm -hmm. the online thing. I really enjoyed myself at, at, at Pear Tree River. When I, I went the, I got a grade three class. No, my colleague had that grade three class, and she said she could not manage that grade three class. And I was well on the way. No, she got the grade three class, and I got the grade nine. Mm -hmm. And I was with them. And then she said to the principal that she couldn't manage to teach down so low. Mm -hmm. She wanted the grade nine. And 
the children said, even if she got the grade nine class, when it came to um, family life, education, mm -hmm. they want back Miss Facey. Miss Facey must come back to come teach family life. Because the principal said she wouldn't run that risk. She saw it as a risk. Mm -hmm. Because there were some things that the students would say mm -hmm. that she was not prepared to hear. Ah. And so I would do that. Mm -hmm. And we had sports, and I was placed in charge of sports, and I would go out as a sports coordinator just like if I was a regular staff member. Mm -hmm. And then I decided that I was going to do the two years, and I saved my money during that two years. I said no, that I wanted to go to college. And when I finished that, the, the principal had gotten, she was on leave with the early childhood group as teacher trainer. Right. So when she was going to do workshop, mm -hmm. she would ask me at school to make the charts because even though I wasn't with with the the, the babies mm -hmm. in the infant department, right. I like them and I always go there mm -hmm. and be there with them. Yes. And so when she was going she would say to me, like Thursday afternoon, she would say, all right, Miss Facey, I'm going to do this lesson at workshop mm -hmm. to empower the teachers. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me to mm -hmm. do the charts and to do the lesson to make presentation at workshop. I'm a service worker, you know? Right. And... She, we would do that. We have that kind of camaraderie. And I would go with her on the Friday to do that, to have workshop with her. Until I just get to like the foundation of things. And so I decided that when I was going to college now, I opted to do early childhood. Mm. And so... After my stint, I applied, went to Shortwood. Oh, you went to Shortwood? Yes, I went to Shortwood. Shortwood was the teacher's college? Yes, for especially what I wanted to do. I heard during that time that churches was the school. Church? Yes. No, man, church. Them time, there's a church of the old people. I can't tell you that. My that, father went to church, Jesus that, College. Well, I know. <laughs> but them, at that time, and they always brag about the Michael. Mm -hmm. So, well, I went to Shorthood. You went to Shorthood? Yes. My mother went to Shorthood as well. But I, I was, everything that went on at Michael, I was at Michael, you know. Mm -hmm. Up to this day, there are a lot of people who didn't know that I went to Shortwood and not Michael. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, very interesting. <laughs> so you, you majored in early childhood. How long did you study for? How long is, is your, your college? How long are your college years? It was three years. Three years. Three years. And then I came out, went on internship. Where? At Port Antonio Infant School. Mm -hmm. I have a student to prove that now. She lives right over on Nanny Close. Her name is Exine Lambert. Mm -hmm. She lives over there right now. Mm -hmm. When I left college, she was among my first set of students at Port Antonio Infant. Oh, let me just school. insert right here. We are at the Jamaica China. What's this school called? Jamaica China. What's the correct term? Jamaica China Goodwill. Infant, infant School. Jamaica China Goodwill Infant School, where you are a member of the board. Yes, I'm a member of the right. board. So um, for, if for our listeners and viewers, if you wanted some, you know, some sort of location, 
um, we are right beside the Red Hills housing scheme, like a stone's throw. Right yes, on, on, on the back side of the, the, <laughs> the, 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 so when you're, you're the Red Hills housing scheme, phase two. Phase two. So yes. when you mention your past student, it's, uh, she is on the Red Hills housing scheme, phase two. Two. Yes. Yes. C continue. All right. And I did one year internship there and we had to write daily lesson plans mm -hmm. and our tutor from college would come in and while we are doing that we have to write our thesis mm -hmm. and I did reading because I specialized in that area mm -hmm. reading and after that I, I left Portland. Mm -hmm. So you spent one year in Portland? Port Antonio? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I came back to St. Thomas. And my first stint after coming back to St. Thomas was Bath All Age. Bath All Age. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I did a year at Bath All Age. Mm -hmm. And then you had Vilma Blair, who used to be on staff at Bath All Age. She uh, got to be the principal at Thornton mm -hmm. All Age. Mm -hmm. So, they needed an early childhood teacher mm -hmm. for grade one. Mm -hmm. And she sent a message mm -hmm. to me. And I went there and I got the job. Mm -hmm. I do another year at Thornton. Mm -hmm. And that was when I had the, 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 the boys who used to, according to them, just check for this teacher because this teacher look article. Right. And so they would, they, they have their things to do. The Friday school was then a problem and they wouldn't come. So they would always come and say to me, say, Miss, please tell for we teacher, say anything they have to teach tomorrow, that would be Friday. Mm -hmm. Teach it from this evening because we now come to school tomorrow. <laughs> they are going to pay a bill. Right. Of course, they have the, the things that they, they, they farm mm -hmm. and they, they have the goat, they raise a goat and things. And so they would credit people going to market and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So they use Friday to go and collect the money. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to them and I said to the teacher, that you have to come with them or else you're not going to have anybody to teach when Friday came. Mm -hmm. And I said to the boys, you all can't go the same week, alternate. Mm -hmm. Some go, maybe three go this week mm -hmm. and the other three go the following week. Mm -hmm. And so I took it up on myself to whatever was missing. I would have extra lessons. I didn't charge them anything. Right. Extra lessons for whatever they, they miss. Mm -hmm. And I use it too to teach them because they said to me that they knew what they were going to do when they leave school. Mm -hmm. So I was now teaching them how to live. Mm -hmm. Them trust out them goods according to them. Mm -hmm. And if you trust out the goods and the goods cost so so much, mm -hmm. and it's like a dozen, mm -hmm. do the maths. Right. So I, it, it was consumer mathematics, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I did the English with them too. And that was my stint. And then now, Mrs. Blake heard that I was back in the parish, came from college, back in the parish, and she sent back for me in Pear Tree River. Mm -hmm. 
How long did you do at Puerto Rico? When she sent back for me? Yes. That was where I spent until I left in 2015. But you did, you did, a, you did a stint at license? Yes, I, I think it was 95, thereabout, that I, I was on leave and I was asked by my first primary school teacher, Mrs. Hortense Marshall, who was principal at license at the time. Ms. To, Marshall, I remember Ms. Marshall. To come and, and help out at license primary. And so I was at license for the duration of the leaf. And then leaf was up, I went back to Pear Tree River. And I was at Pear Tree River until 2015 when the school was closed. I went to Morant Bay Primary and I was given the special, the children. I was in charge of the children with special needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. children until my retirement in 2017. So post-retirement, you're, you're more of an administrator now. You're on boards, you, you consult, you're, you're not actively teaching, like in the classroom, are you, I'm asking? No. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not actually in the classroom. But everywhere I go, I educate. Ah. Everywhere I go, I, I educate, but I'm now like on board, I'm on board at the Duck and Field Primary School and at the China Goodwill Infant School, Jamaica China Goodwill Infant School. And I am on a lot of community thing. Mm -hmm. Right now I am, as a matter of fact, I, I'm a justice of the peace about 23 years now. Ah, I see. Yes. I was commissioned from Isaac Matalan time. I see. So, I know that I am retired. I am on boards. I board from church to school. Mm -hmm. And I have groups at that school that I, I, at church, because I am the director for the women's ministry at the Port Marant Wesleyan Holiness Church. I also adjudicate at the lay magistrates court mm -hmm. in the parish mm -hmm. as a justice of the peace. Mm -hmm. And I also see a ministry of justice, um, restorative justice, mediation, and all of that. So I am well... Well experienced yes, in the education and, arena. And, and active. I just can't see myself sitting down, that is not a part of me. And you shouldn't, and you shouldn't. So, my last question to you. How do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as an educator from all level, a fun-loving person, just nice to be near. You have three children. Yes, I have three children. Briefly, give, an, give us, give, just talk to us briefly about your three children. My three wonderful children, Kalila, Kedan, and Kadeen. I love them dearly. And why the K's? Why, why, why K? Kalila came first, and I just decided I was going through the Bible one afternoon and I saw the name Kedar. I was, I was pregnant at the time and I decided 
I, I liked the name and I decided that I was going to give the child. I would have to add something if it was a girl and if it was a boy, I would give the full name Kedar. But then I realized that people wasn't pronouncing the name properly. And so I took off the A-R and put O-N. Kedon. And since then, I realized that there are other Kedons. Mm -hmm. But my Kedon is the original. Kedon. Everybody else a carbon copy. <laughs> my Kedon is the real deal. Right. All right. And then no, when Kadin came along, I said... Then, Kalelia is a K-H. And I am going to find a K-H. And I said it was Kadeen. But I wasn't going to spell the regular Kadeen because my Kadeen is not an ordinary Kadeen. Right. So I gave it a K-H-A-D-E-A-N-E. Kadeen. Kadeen. Kalelia Kadeen. And Kadon. Kadon. <laughs> All right, and they, they are wonderful children. They, they, they come together as siblings mm -hmm. for one common cause, mm -hmm. but they are three different children completely. And you're proud of all three of them. Yes, and, and I, I gave them the leeway, Kadeen, Live as Kadin, profile as Kadin, Cal profile as Cal, and Kedan. Be yourself. Let them be who they are. Yes. No force anything on them. Mm -hmm. And being an educator, early childhood, we start at the beginning. And mark you, I took all of them to school at age two. Mm -hmm. I think Kadeen went to school at one year and what? 11 months. Mm -hmm. Kedan went to school one year and 10 months. Mm -hmm. Carl was the only one who went into school at age two mm -hmm. because she born August and school begins September. September. Mm -hmm. So she was two the August and she went to school the September. Ah, I see. Right. I see. They are three different persons, three different characters, but there are times when they get together for one common cause. For example, if there is a death in the family, mm -hmm. if there is illness in the family, mm -hmm. more so them, them granny, mm -hmm. then they will come together mm -hmm. to sort that out. Mm -hmm. And even their mother at this time, right. they come together and decide what is to be done because according to them, they call the shots. They are all wonderful children. They are own thing in their own sphere and I am proud of them and if I have to live my life over I wouldn't change I wouldn't change my calling you notice I didn't say my job or my career mm -hmm. because it's not it's a calling mm -hmm. and I would not change the three children my three children for any other children they are my children and as so they live and they talk and they demonstrate they practice i can see my roots a part of me coming out in all of them in one way or legacy another. your legacy yes yes well ladies and gentlemen this has been another episode of storytelling in the tropics my guest, my wonderful guest, probably needs another sit down at some other point to get into the nitty gritty of some of her, her movement as a teacher and an administrator. And I don't know how I had forgotten to tell you that I am a proud member of the Jamaica Teachers Association. The Jamaica Teachers Association. And still is. A 
even retired, you can still be Yes, there. still it's is, because I'm a part of the, um, the membership. Yes. I was membership for St. Thomas mm -hmm. for 25 years mm -hmm. in the JTA. And I am still a part of membership in St. Thomas. Interesting. I became a member from early, from early. I was a member of the Jamaica Teachers Association from youth service days. But when I went to college, there was a, a, a break there, even though they had um, student membership. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I came back to St. Thomas, not as soon as I left college, as I came back to St. Thomas, I made sure that I renew my membership and even until now. For the Jamaica Teachers Association, um, I have grown educationally, socially, and everything, everything, professionally, mm -hmm. more than all. Mm -hmm. That part of me is from JTA, and I am still a part of JTA. And you ask about no, if I sometimes, yes, I mentor the young teachers. When I go to these meetings, I always like pre-retirement meetings or new teachers meeting a, a slot to tell of my experience mm -hmm. and what to expect because it would seem that those things are not taught in college anymore. Mm -hmm. Professionalism, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about the practical side of things. Mm -hmm. And so I am very proud of my JTA. <laughs> I'm still a member of my JTA. With so much so, I, I said for 20 odd years, I was the membership chairperson for St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. No, I am on the membership committee for St. Thomas with responsibility for retired teachers and independent schools. I see, I see, I right. see. And that is the short version of the story of Veronica. Oh yes, short <laughs> version is so right. <laughs> that is the short version. That's Thank you so very right. much, Miss Tracy, for taking the time out to speak with me. We definitely probably have to schedule another sit down to dive a little bit deeper into some of your other stories in terms of your education, uh, your, your stint as an educator, an administrator, and as an organizer on a whole. So thank you very much, Lady Facey. This has been another episode of Storytelling in the Tropics. I am Alison Harrison. Please stay tuned to more content, more stories from my island home in Jamaica. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>